is Jack Hill. So today's vlogging is going to be about jobs in prison. Now when I say jobs in prison I don't mean civilian jobs in prison or screws prison officers or anything like that. Uh, what I mean is for prisoners serving a sentence what jobs are there inside the prison system in the UK. Now I'm going to tell you a bit about what I observed and um, sort of what jobs were available that I saw as well as the jobs that I undertook and what they were what they were like and what they were about, you know. So, uh, in Forest Bank, the first prison that I was in, uh, the Cat B prison, the slightly higher security prison, there was quite a number of jobs. Um, I very quickly got a job as uh, in the guitar, kind of the music department, um, which was, I think that there's something to do with music therapy behind it. And they just had a room with guitars in, basically, and a bit of tiny, tiny amount of recording equipment. And an absolutely lovely guitar teacher. He was a really nice guy. Um, so it's kind of like therapy for people, basically. And people just went and did it for, like, four-week four periods, um, sometimes to try it out. And then anyone who wasn't disruptive or disrupting the rest of the class, basically, could stay a bit longer if they wanted to. Or, you know, um, it was just up to the teacher, basically. But anyway, that, uh, that's the job that I did. But let me tell you about the other jobs first uh, that were available. So there was um, there was a library uh, and there was jobs in there, not many. And I worked in there very briefly before I left. Uh, music room, as I've said. Education, which covers a lot of different things. So the, there's orderlies in every single kind of department, let's say, and area of the prison. Uh, so orderlies are like trusted prisoners who you know they've worked in a position for a certain amount of time or they've gained a certain amount of um, respect and trust by uh, s civilian staff and the the screws who work in the department as well uh, so they're trusted to do slightly more important things uh, sometimes it's administrative uh, administratively based i don't know if that's a word or not Ad admin stuff um or sometimes it's, um, you know, carrying messages to other people. I, was I ever an orderly? I don't think I was ever an orderly, so um, I don't really know massively what it entails. But it's basically just more trusted things, and they're, they're allowed to sort of clean up afterward, or like close things down at the end of the day, like when no one people, fewer people are there, or there's just a few civilians left, you know. It's, um, it's just a trusted position in each department. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, there's one in every single department. Then there's the chapel. Um, sorry, first of all, the education. The reason that covers lots of stuff is because uh, cons uh, are sometimes obliged to do certain courses. Like as part of your rehabilitation, re there's a resettlement program and like rehabilitation programs. So go right. Part of your rehabilitation is that we need to, you know, get you uh, your very basic NVQ level English and maths, or you know, a cooking thing, or just something. I, mean, it's, I don't think it's NVQ level, but. They'll do very basic level um, courses in which they have something to focus on. You know, it develops the personal skills a little bit more in whatever area. And the theory is that um, one, they have something to focus on. Two, it develops their mind a little bit. So if they're slightly more educated, they're less likely to commit another offence afterward. Um, and sometimes it's uh, to try and educate the prisoner in the sense of teaching them like remorse and... Uh, to consider the implications on lots of other people. Like there's this, um, what's it called now? Pebble in the pond effect, let's call it. Where there's, oh, ripple effect, that's what it's called. Um, where you do this diagram and you say, right, this is my crimes in the middle and what are the potential victims that could be affected from this ripple effect that goes out? So again, you can see the kind of benefit for that is teaching empathy, I guess, um, to a large extent. So anyway, uh, the chapel that had a good few orderlies, mainly people who made brews, but there was like um, psychiatrists there and like people, uh, social workers and, you know, general chapel events as well. So religious things as well. Uh, like I played, I played piano a few times in the chapel at Forest Bank. One was for Black History Month, um, which was really fun to play. Uh, so I just played a few compositions of things that I'd made up when I just started learning piano, penano. 
uh, in Forest Bank went down like a storm as well. Oh, and what was funny at the time was uh, they do roll call, so when they come and count the prisoners in each section of the prison, and when I was playing uh, for the Black History Month, um, they forgot, they kept forgetting to count me as a con because they thought I was a civilian and just come in to do some piano or something, you know. So then the screws later on came over to me and were like, oh, we forgot to count you. You don't look like a con. You don't look like a con. Pe uh, sometimes other cons, friends of mine and stuff, would be talking about me to other people and they'd come over to me and say, can you Adam and Eve it? As in, can you believe it that this guy did such a stupid thing and a, and a big crime, you know? Uh, it was an ongoing joke during my sentence that I don't look the part. But in any case... Um, so yeah, there was other stuff. There was the workshop. Now that was a, a huge, huge um, area. I think it was called the workshop. It was something very, very similar to that. It was like a workshoppy kind of environment, engineery kind of environment, but it wasn't really complicated engineering. It was more like a production line for producing different things, tools and clothes and you know all sorts of different stuff. There's a hell of a lot of things produced in prison. Uh, people argue that, that that's the new slave um, industry and it's just developed into kind of a more specified area. Um, I'm not sure if I agree with that or not. I don't know my thoughts on it, especially at the given minute. <laughs> um, so yeah, there was gardens as well. Uh, not many people at Forest Bank worked in that, as far as I know. There was very, very small gardens. In fact, I think they were tended to by the protected wing, the nonces, as they are called in prison. Um, the sex offenders, basically. They tended to the gardens. Yeah, that's, that is right. And then there was the most sought after um, uh, places to work, which was the gym. And the kitchens seemed to get quite a big demand as well. Now, you can understand that for kitchens, you get access to food, so you can give yourself a larger portion, or you can give yourself slightly better quality food, or you can there's some kind of quality control to the food you're eating, at least. So for some people, that was important. And... Um, you know, sought after, I guess, by people on the wing. Also, there was a kind of power play to it where uh, you say, if you knew everyone on the wing or if you knew a large percentage of people on the wing, you can kind of, there's a bit of power that you can do there where you go, yeah, I'll give you an extra sausage or something. Although, an extra sausage might be too much, but um, no, that kind of thing did happen. It happened at Kirkham Mall and I'm not so much at Forest Bank that I saw, but I guess it would happen. Just a larger portion of beans and that kind of thing. P things that are less easy to recognise uh, so that the screw right next to that person being served, sorry, so that the con next to the other con being served doesn't go, wait a minute, he's getting more than than I just got. What the hell's going on here? Because it would immediately kick off. And cons are the type of people that are very jealous of other people's portions and stuff. So it'd go crazy very quickly. Um, and the gym is sought after because... Um, blokes get obsessed with training when they go inside. Or s a certain percentage of blokes get very obsessed with training inside because it's just something you can focus on. I mean, I, I wouldn't say I got obsessed with it, but it became uh, a large percentage of my pastime was spent, you know, working out or going to the gym or going running or, you know, doing something uh, physical of some kind or a pad workout, you know, lots of press ups. So, yeah. Um, it's just a it's a it feels like a good release it's a good activity to kind of keep your mind on things you can do targets and goals and have and it's a good way to absorb a lot of time mentally um in prison where you plan out you go right i've got a training plan for the next six months so if i stick to that by the end of the six months you know my sentence over perhaps if you had a six month sentence for whatever reason um but i found it very very useful to set training goals anyway going off on a tangent about training uh, there's also cleaning, obviously, that's a massive thing. Wing cleaners uh, are quite a sought-after job as well, and then other cleaners in general. Um, and that's about all I can remember for Forest Bank. Obviously, there's orderlies on all, loads of different sections. The wing cleaners are kind of like the wing orderlies. Um, but then, yeah, the library. <laughs> in fact, when I was working in the library briefly at Forest Bank, I we went round to the different wings to deliver books. Much like if you've seen Shawshank Redemption, the guy is pushing along a trolley full of books past each cell. It's bars cells, and it wasn't like that in Forest Bank. Uh, and they'd pass a book through. I go, oh, did you order this? There you go. You know, that kind of thing. And basically, that's what we, me and another guy did um, on on every different wing in Forest Bank, just for a, a small period of time when I did it. And um, on what kept happening on the wings was... Well, first of all, the first wing that we went to 
a screw opened the like unlocked the door and let us onto the wing and and he said to me he looked at us both and then said to me oh have you forgot your key i meaning um oh you're clearly a civilian employee have you not got your key on me on you uh, and i was i not thinking of it and just being sincere at the time was just like what are you talking about uh, i don't have a key i'm a con and he was just like, oh my god i thought you were a civilian ah <clears throat> So then we were laughing about that. And then he shouted to the other screw on the wig and went, look at this guy, this guy's a con apparently. So again, can you add him an emit? What we proceeded to do for the following wings was have a joke with the uh, prison officers, uh, knock on the door, try to look slightly more official. And then when they opened it and it happened two more times out of like, I can't remember how many wings there are in Forest Bank now, maybe like 12 or 16, something like that. It was upstairs and downstairs and other wings everywhere else as well, so I can't remember. Um, but they opened the door they'd opened the door these other two guys and said oh um are you all right what are you doing and i was just like oh, i'm just going along with this orderly you know doing this i've not got my key on me at the minute actually and they were just like oh okay um i'll phone over you know have you left it in your locker at the front or something and then after like you know 30 seconds of, a, of prattling around and pretending that i'm in this role i'd be like no i'm a con really and they'd be like oh which, in my mind, immediately, I'm like, well, there's a security risk right there that I can pretend to be a civilian. I wondered how far I could take it, but I wasn't interested in doing that. It was just a little bit of a joke and something that amused us at the time, me and the other uh, librarian guy. Anywho, uh, getting caught up in a tangent once again. So, I, most of the time that I was there, I was in the music room. <laughs> and as good as it sounds, um, in fact, it, it's funny because you can, I could say it was really good. And by that, I mean, of the options that I had inside, it was the most preferable to me at the time. Now, if you compare that to me just, say, teaching guitar to someone in my house, it would be very unpreferable for me to do that right now, if you can understand that. Um, so, yeah, it's just it was just a good choice out of the options, you know. Um, it's not that it was objectively good. Anyway, uh, Havrig. <laughs> I was only there for about five or six weeks, um, and... There was a very slow processing time for like processing a new prisoner coming into there and getting them a job in that prison. Uh, so for the first like th three and a half, maybe four weeks, I did virtually nothing. I was just doing my inductions, uh, you know, trying to go to the library when I could. I couldn't be inducted to the gym yet. I don't think. Oh, I remember there was there was a Cat D section to um, Havrig. So to start off with, I did all my inductions, was on the normal wings for, for a few days, um, and then luckily got put onto the Cat D area very quickly. Um, and then um, they there was a little facility right next to a few... There was only two wings um, on the, in the Cat D section for Havrig, and there was a gym right, right next to them both. Just a little thing with a few cross trainers and very basic stuff. Um, so I, I was just going in there quite a lot, you know, um, training, reading, and someone on the wing had a, a really crappy guitar, so I was playing that quite a lot. Um, and summer had just kicked in as well by this stage, so uh, it was actually quite nice outside. So I'd often just go outside. I mean, it was, and it sounds lovely if you say, "Oh, I just went outside, sat on a bench uh, next to the wing with a book and read," um, but <laughs> it really, <laughs> it's really not that good. Because it's so boring. If you can find things to do and you're perfectly entertained no matter where you are, no matter the circumstance, then you might be okay in prison. Uh, but for me, you know, there's still the massive divide. I mean, there was a huge geographical divide between where I was at that time, because it's in Cumbria up on the uh, west coast somewhere, uh, next to a, a mountain called the Black Coombe. Um, and, uh, yeah, so basically I just, I just sat there uh, playing playing guitar or reading books for for a lot of well for the first four weeks, and then I was like, okay, I'm going to go and apply for a job. So one of the times when I was in the library, I said, oh, is there any jobs going here? You know, can I apply? And they said, oh, yeah, actually, there's a job coming up. So then the following week, I applied. Uh, I went in for an interview, and then the week after, they sent a slip to me saying, oh yeah, we'd like you to come and be the new orderly. So on the first day. I, that they'd sent me that slip. I went down and said, you know, they sent me the slip and said, turn up at this on this day at this time, and you know, you'll be able to get past everyone, past all the screws and stuff because you're going to work. And um, I turned up and was like going through the induction process, and within thirty minutes of me being there and him, you know, the other 
I think there was another con or a civilian who was explaining to me like okay no this goes here this is the filing system another screw came in and said you know Jack Hill Jack Hill and I'm like yeah and he said oh you're being shipped out to Kirkham um, and I was like what and then I got congratulated because I held the record for um, the con who held the position of librarian for the shortest amount of time at Havrig unjustly though it sounds like I've been fired you know other people competing for that job that title you know the shortest amount of time in the librarian position would normally be fired or do something bad and immediately be cast out so I'm like ah oh, damn it anyway went to Kirkham much more preferable than Havrig even the Cat D section uh, because there was home visits and town leaves and that kind of stuff oh, so it was incredible at the time in my sentence that's what I needed I needed to see my family and friends um uh, and then in Kirkham, the different jobs that were available, there was loads of jobs there. It was a sli was it a slightly bigger prison than Havrig? Um, oh, there was other jobs in Havrig as well. There was things like uh, farm um, workers, lots and lots of people doing that. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, there was a smokery there as well for some fish. They had an on-site smokery, so the people who attended that. It was like clothing areas, loads of different jobs. Pretty much everything you can imagine um, there, was, there was a con job for. And then in Kirkham, there was a greenhouse. And I love horticulture, so I wanted to get in that as quick as possible. So I managed to get into it eventually. Um, you know, within, after I'd done the induction and all that kind of stuff, applied for the greenhouse, got it, and then loved it. Worked there for a long time. And then there was a bit of a kerfuffle when I had a disciplinary. Had to go and work somewhere else for, a, for a, a, a stint. I think it was 10 weeks. I had to work there for a minimum of 10 weeks. And then I, I went back to the greenhouse. Um, but anyway, uh, there was greenhouse, farms again, um, and there was something for like animal care. I forgot what it's called now. Um, and then there was uh, <laughs> the place that I was forced to work was called Calpac. There was a DHL as well, the kind of delivery service. Um, and that was people pack, you know, the canteens that I've mentioned before, when people, you put in your weekly canteen, say you want to get shampoo and toothbrush and, uh, you know, moisturizer and whatever the hell you want and additional food like I used to get a lot of muesli and you can get t t tuna and tuna and other random things like that and um, they are packed um, in DHL um, at least for Kirkham they were I never got to work there so um, I don't know exactly how what their capacity was um, but I think they packed things for other people as well and distributed them other work, other places. It was kind of like a delivery service or a packing service of some kind. It's very sought after because it was the highest earning job in prison, certainly that I'd saw. And when I say highest earning, it was like 30 quid a week. And that might sound high for a prisoner, but there was a lot of labour involved in that as well. So they earned that money, as far as I'm concerned. There could be a debate about that. Then there was a timber yard for people looking after wood and... Um, treating wood and doing different things to it and you know going sorting out other other problems on site that were wood related uh there were farms i've mentioned and loads and loads of orderlies there was loads of orderlies at kirkham and uh for a while i was i was let out of the greenhouse and of a few other things that i was doing there to go and play music at different times so for the band funny shade of red one of my other videos the music video that was a prison band that wrote that song the, the singer who sings it he wrote that song and well I kind of helped arrange it and put some parts to it and stuff uh, but he it's all his lyrics and his vocals um, and uh, that band played in a few different places um, and had a few gigs outside of prison and inside of prison and uh, I was occasionally let out to do that and I'd go and play piano for a, a care home uh, in Kirkham in the, in the town Kirkham uh, which was really nice, um, although they'd often complain about if I was playing something for too long, they'd go, turn the record, change it over, play as this, play as that, and I wasn't good enough to take requests, unfortunately, but um, it seemed to perk them up a little bit. A lot of them were very, well, seemed very entertaining. They'd tap the foot and nod the head and stuff, you know. Um, so just describing them has taken so long. I might do another vlog about uh, exact details or any questions that people have, put in the below or tweet me. And the next vlog that I'll do, I'll do about those questions and tweets um, about jobs in prison and exactly, you know, what they entailed maybe or uh, what limitations there were on security and, you know, that kind of stuff. 
So, I hope you've enjoyed this vlogging, you beautiful people. I hope you all have a fantastic week and weekend. I love you all! Um, catch you on the flip side. Bye!